So I played Splatoon 2 first off. That was the first thing I got to, and I played it actually on the, um, the portable screen with, with the controls on the side. So I played that. What was that like? Splatoon 2 was great. I mean, it was, it, it didn't, um, it didn't look, it looks slightly better, but not majorly better than Splatoon. Um, there's new movements to be made in terms of sort of dodge rolls that was quite, that, that, that will come into play a lot more, I think, competitively. Um, there was a couple of new guns. There was the twin shooters as well, which was a nice, a nice gun choice. Um, but there was very little there to make me really go, um, except for the new maps and all that kind of stuff. So I am looking forward to Splatoon 2. One of the complaints I had about it when I played it, it was a demo unit, and you couldn't turn off the gyroscope for the um, for the aim, which I personally don't play with. I know a lot of people do because they say that once you get used to that, <coughs> excuse me, once you get used to that playing Splatoon, it's the way to go. But for myself, I was just a bit, eh, um, didn't really get into it. I probably should have done. Uh, so I played that first with the, with, with the actual, with the portable screen. Uh, in terms of the controls, the controls feel great and it feels like a solid unit you've got in your hands. It doesn't feel like the Wii U, particularly with the white version that I've got, it can just feel a bit cheap and plasticky to a certain extent. Maybe it's just because of the white color. I think the black certainly does look a lot better. Uh, but it just it can feel a bit cheap and plastically. The problem I had with the uh, with the switch controller is this, and this is if you can have a look. People who are playing Wii U owners are going to have a bit of a, um, an adjustment to make. Um, on the Wii U controller, you have your two analog sticks. They're up here. They are at equal length um, on an equal parallel line. I think that's the term on the Wii U controller. So you've got it there. Okay, and your buttons, your direction pads uh, on your on my left hand, it's down there, and my buttons are there. So it's quite, and I've got my two sets there. So it's quite like that. They are on the same line. On the switch, on the right hand controller, they've moved, they've switched the analog and the buttons down. So your finger has to go there, on Splatoon particularly, because one hand does the movement, all right, you've got the gyroscope, but the other hand you do sort of strafing in the aim reticle. Which is really weird because then you kind of got, you're not used to that, it, especially on the Wii U. You know, on on the place that on you know on the PS4, you used to the analog sticks at the bottom with the buttons on top. With the Wii U, analog sticks at the top, buttons at the bottom. With the Switch, they're different on either side, and that took a little bit of getting used to. With everything that I played on the uh, portable screen, it was just that bit of adjustment, and I couldn't get the hang of it entirely. Um, during that period. You'll probably get used to it, but if you're coming from the Wii U, you're gonna have a bit of a strange time. Uh, then I played Splatoon 2 again, and I played it on the big screen with the um, portable controller. I'm normally not one to say that I can really tell the difference between 720p and 1080p. I noticed the difference big time from going from the screen to the big monitor TV with the 1080p. I actually noticed the, dis um, noticed the difference. Um, on that screen, uh, it looked great, it looks a lot better. Um, and with the controller itself, the Pro Controller, um, not that impressed with it. It's a very much a standard uh, game controller for the time now. Didn't really feel or look like it was doing different, which is kind of a, sh I think it's Nintendo have just produced it because they kind of feel, eh, we need to make an Xbox PS4 like controller because we need it we ne they never really done it with the they done it with the Wii originally later on in the life cycle uh, they did do it with the Wii U and they improved it a bit this new one it just kind of feels it just felt like a third party controller it didn't feel Nintendo and that's, that's a, a statement I'm going to have to try to describe it just didn't feel of quality or innovation it felt very stock very default um and one of the interesting things I found about that controller, and I asked a few people this that were sort of on the um, that they're running the um, running the units in the show, and no one really confirmed with me. There is no microphone or headset port on that Pro controller. Okay, so there is on the um, the portable nature of it. You can put your headphone in the top. You put headphones in the top, and I put my headphones I've got with me, my Plantronics in because I bought them with me. But on the Pro controller, you don't get that. Um, which I think is kind of, we we can establish, all right, there I'm not going to have a, um, there's not going to be voiceover chat supported on this console. I really doubt it if they've not got on the Pro Controller. And I'm disappointed they don't have on the Pro Controller because 
you know, certainly for myself, sometimes if I'm playing uh, like the PS4 or um, even sometimes with the Wii U, if I'm playing, yeah, even sometimes with the Wii U, um, I don't want to have volume on my TV. I like to just plug my headset into my controller and I've got it all there. Not even for the microphone, even just sometimes just for the audio so I can have the TV down so you know I'm not disturbing my wife or the dog when it's late at night. Uh, so it's a shame that it hasn't got that on there. So played Splatoon, it was great. Uh, I didn't play Zelda. I made a conscious decision not to play Zelda because I've got Zelda as the launch title. I've, I've avoided kind of purposefully um, any real trailers, news, story, videos about Breath of the Wild. They had it all there. They had, it was the biggest booth they had going was for Breath of the Wild. There was a lot of machines. It had the biggest queues. Uh, I saw pictures of it, glanced at videos of it, and yeah, it looks great. But I didn't play it because that I'm saving for launch day because that is the big launch day title and that's, you know, I'm booking off the week after. That's going to be, I'm going to complete that game in one go. So I'll be having a live stream going for Breath of the Wild when it comes out. Um... Should be able to live stream it. I can hope so. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to live stream it through the console. I haven't seen that come out yet, but I've got um, my setup so I can do it through there. You just won't be able to see my beautiful face, perhaps, because I haven't got a camera to hand yet. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't play Breath of the Wild. What I played after Splatoon next, I played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Edition. Um, it's Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U with all the DLC. That's it. Oh, and two new characters. Um, can't remember what they were now. I think it was something to do with Peach and maybe a Skull Guy or something, something like that. Um, yeah, played that. I played that on the uh, Pro Controller. Uh, I also played that on the uh, Portable Nature and I played it with the little wheel they had as well. Um, first off with the wheel, if you had Mario Kart on the Wii and you had it on the Wii U, it's a gimmicky little thing. It's for kids. I think they're selling two. I think you can pick up two of them for... Um, Twelve ninety nine on Amazon. I think that's how much it costs to get two little wheels. And if you got kids, hey, it's an easy thing. And that's one of the actual, you know, kind of nice things about the Wii U, not the Wii U, the Nintendo Switch, is that with them two little controllers, you do have, you can go two player straight away from the start. And if you buy another two of them, you got four controllers straight away. Um, but they're saying for like seventy four pounds or something for like to get a pair. I think they're forty five individually. Anyway. Um, so with the Switch, so with Mario Kart, yeah, it, it didn't blow me away. I mean, it was Mario Kart 8. The only difference they'd done with it was there's an antenna at the back now um, that beeps sort of when you turn around corners to kind of give, um, the specific they said to give young players help learning how to play the game, which I thought was, you know, was a nice little feature. Uh, will I be picking it up? Yeah, I'll be picking it up because I'll want to get a Mario Kart game. And I'm borrowing the same Mario Kart game again, um, which is a shame, uh, but I can see why they've done it because it's a cheap and easy port to get across. So I played Mario Kart. What did I play after Mario Kart 8? Played Bomberman, because there's a new fucking Bomberman game coming out, which um, is brilliant. I mean, it, so with the Bomberman game, how we played the Bomberman game, we did play it on the big screen. We play, It was me and the guy running the booth, and we played it on the portable screen. And I had one of the little Joy-Cons, he had one of the little Joy-Cons, and it was that two-player two screen, two screen, like you see on the trailer for the Switch, where they're standing around, you know, they're sitting around playing basketball, when they could be playing real basketball. Um, just like that, we played Bomberman. Um, the screen is quite, you know, it's probably like the distance I am now from where I'm sitting here to the camera. It's kind of that distance, so I know, like, that much distance, however that much is. Um, I'm terrible with distances, I do apologise. Um, but it was... I could see everything clearly. Wow, the colour has just changed as the sun moves across. Um, I could see everything quite clearly, see what was going on, um, play the game, um, and it was great. It was really fun. It's a Bomberman game. I'm happy to see another Bomberman game. What, um, I used to have Bomberman on the PS3, and a couple of guys I used to work with, we used to play Bomberman. Just get fucked up and play Bomberman, basically. And it's a really great party game. And it's great with, um, you know, if you do pick that up, because of with the Joy-Con nature, out of the box, that's two player. It's going to support eight player offline multiplayer, which I'm uh, um, thank you because with the PS4 and so with the PS, yeah, you know, with the PS3, it, it done eight player. Was it seven or eight player? It done. I think it done seven or eight. I think it was seven player offline, and I think the PS4 only does six player offline. You argue about this in the comments below, um, but the, the Switch is doing eight player offline, and Mo and Bomberman is going to be one of the eight player offline games, which is yes, thank you very much. Uh, happy about that because you pick up another pack of them Joy-Cons and then bam, you've got four player 
Bomberman action with all your friends. You'll have a great time doing it. Uh, you know, hopefully you can plug the portable into the main docking station, have it on the big screen, and you're just gonna have fun. It's gonna be Bomberman. It's a great game. Uh, what I played after that? I played the new Street Fighter game. Well, new Street Fighter game. I think it's Super Street Fighter 2 Ultimate Edition. So I played that, which has got um, Evil Ken and Dark Ray, Dark Ryu in it. Um, it's the Super Street Fighter 2 like HD one they done for the PS3 and I think it was the Xbox 360 probably about six, seven years ago uh, where they took Street Fighter 2 and they just redone all the sprites and the imagery to make them like HD slightly um, anime, slightly subtle cartoonish style. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great game. It's a great Street Fighter 2 game. I'm happy to see it on the console. I will probably be picking it up, definitely. Um, and then what did I do after 